Hi, and welcome to Rodney Illustrations Global Fusion Dream Fuel. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be looking at the astrological chart for the island of Jamaica using the date of its independence from Great Britain on midnight August 6, 1962 as the symbolic date of its birth, so to speak. I'll also look at some of the numerology pertaining to this date and what it indicates as well as giving you a very special, highly theoretical Jamaican Seven Chakra system hidden in plain sight. So stick around for that and let me know what you think. Give or take, this astrological chart represents the generations of Jamaicans born on or around August 6, 1962, as this period in time reflects the energy that coalesced at that point in time from all of the aspirations and efforts of the previous generations. If you were born before that date of Jamaica's independence, it is my opinion that you will still benefit from the influence of the generations born on or after it, but your astrological chart is still intrinsically tied to when Jamaica was a British colony, and your worldviews and ideals are greatly shaped by the colonial mindset, for better or worse. It doesn't make you any less Jamaican, but it might help to explain some of the ideological conflicts that arise from time to time between older and younger generations. Diving right in with the Sun, which represents our sense of self, we have the Sun in the zodiac sign of Leo, which should be no surprise as the lion iconography due to Rastafarian culture features very prominently in the artwork across the island. Leo is known for residing in the spotlight and for creative expression, and both of these attributes are associated with Jamaican culture exported from the island. Whether it's from entertainers like the Marley family, Shaggy, Sean Paul, Grammy Kid Shabaranks, or reggae and dancehall music in general, or in the field of sports like Shelley Ann Fraser Price, Usain Bolt, or even our famous Blue Mountain Coffee. For good or bad, Jamaica itself is also constantly in the spotlight as either a popular tourist attraction or for its more notorious aspects. Next, we have our rising sign, which speaks about the energy that we give to the world. The rising sign is in Taurus, which indicates resourcefulness and productivity. This placement is not easily impressed or disturbed by things that other people get excited about. Instead, it indicates the ability to discern what is practical and what is not. In other words, when a frighten easy, which is a Jamaican idiom that expresses this sentiment iconically. Both Leo and Taurus are fixed signs, and having this combination might indicate the ability to endure, to persevere, to have a very fixed and conservative viewpoint, as well as an inherent stubbornness. Taurus in the Tarot is the Hierophant, which represents traditional modes of imparting wisdom like the Church. Jamaica has more churches per square mile than any other country in the world, so if you look at the Rastafarian movement and Pan-African ideas that emerged from the relationship with the Sun in Leo and the proliferation of churches in the island, which harkens back to the Taurus influence, you can see how examining the astrology of things might prove insightful. Leo and Taurus also square each other in the zodiac and in this particular aspect, so that indicates challenges, which indeed there have been. Now we have the Moon in Libra. The Moon represents the emotional component, and this placement indicates that Jamaicans have a desire to create beauty, harmony, and balance and the ability to work with other people in order to attain these things. Some of these qualities like beauty and charisma can also be manifested as physical attributes, and on the negative side, the balancing act of Libra is represented in the tit-for-tat revenge culture and one-upmanship. Having the moon in Libra suggests being strongly intuitive, and in Jamaica we don't speak in terms of intuition, though we speak in terms of vibe and spirit, me catch a vibe, my spirit just not tech to the boy de or the gal de. And when you speak in terms of vibe or spirit, you're also speaking in terms of intuition. Next on the list is the planet Venus, and Jamaica has Venus in Virgo. And since this is the birth chart for the entire island, we're going to use Venus to represent the archetypal Jamaican woman. 
Now, people, before I get myself in trouble, we're going to be talking about the iconic Jamaican woman. And this might be your granny, your mama, your auntie, your church sister, the ladies. Now, we see the qualities like independence, industriousness, intelligence, someone with high standards for themselves, and someone who knows exactly what they want and what they don't want. If you're a Jamaican man, these are generally the qualities that you admire in a woman. Now for the archetypal Jamaican man, we have to look at the planet Mars, and for this we have Mars and Gemini. This placement has attributes like multitasking, constant activity, a desire for intellectual stimulation, very adept at communicating, and if you look at Jamaican culture, you'll see that dancehall and reggae artists, media personalities, politicians, and even preachers to a certain extent hold sway over the masses, and their ideas influence the direction and the energy of the island. Even with people who are not celebrities or in the spotlight being able to communicate, bargain, barter, hustle, drop lyrics are all considered to be ideal traits. Even in folklore like Anansi the Spider, we see how cunning and persuasiveness is represented with Mars and Gemini. The speech can also become a little aggressive as is seen with countless examples of dancehall DJs and even how Jamaicans tend to roast or cat them one another for amusement. That's it for the astrological segments. I'm not going to get into the Jupiter through Pluto, Chiron or the nodes right now. Maybe I'll do that in part two. Now we're going to look at the numerology behind the independence date and what it means for the Jamaicans or the generations of Jamaicans since ushering in that era. So now we're going to examine some of the numerological values and just like with astrological chart, that one here generally are going to be applicable for the portion of time between the date when Jamaica became independent on August 6, 1962 until the present time at least until such a time when the island formally break all ties with the British monarchy and turn in our republic. If or when that happen, you're going to need to do another chart with updated Kadawanya, now go good again. Anyway, moving along. The first numerological assignment that we're going to look at is the life path number, which is five. This indicates that Jamaicans in this era are versatile, quick thinking, capable of multitasking, and extremely adept at bargaining. Next, we have the personality number of eight, indicating that Jamaicans in general benefit from having mental clarity, being goal-oriented, being uncompromising in style, making every effort to look good, cause style is style and style can't spoil the seat. Usually, even if people don't have one whole heap of sitting, they're going to take care of what they have, and they can turn them on a make fashion. May I ask you, a sort of thing stay, or a sort of it true? Show me another comment and let me know what I'm going on. Then last, we have the expression number one, two. We tell you, so Jamaican people, generally, generally, we said generally, we not talk about the crab them. Generally, Jamaican people, most of us friendly and open-minded, intuitive, which means that we can read the vibes. Also, we can operate well behind the scenes. Yeah, we might love the hype, but if you check the situation, if you look upon people, them were big and famous, whether they are an athlete or a musician or it's just somebody where you rate, Remember, so them people, they always have a big team behind them. We do enough of the work where you can't see whether it's a coach or some other sound engineer or a promotion team or if it's just a crew where I boost them up and help build the vibes or go train with them. You see it. Now, this section of the video is extremely theoretical. I was just looking at the national heroes of Jamaica and thought seven heroes, seven chakras, and kind of incredulously went ahead and dug deeper to see if I could find any overlap. And to my surprise, yes, there is some overlap, and I'll explain my methodology of how I arrived at this obviously audacious claim, and you tell me what your thoughts are. The first problem is how do these individuals align with the seven major chakras? Well, we have three of those heroes who were born in the 19th century, but who became active and relevant in the 20th century, and we know their dates of birth, and it is the significant actions during the course of these individuals' lives which made a lasting impression, and which defined our cultural identity as Jamaicans. Then we have another three, also born in the 19th century, but we don't know their exact dates of birth. However, 
These three from the early part of the 19th century were all martyrs and they were fighting for justice and freedom and subsequently killed for it, which is a significant point because it's not necessarily their lives that made them heroic, but the fact that they died for their beliefs that galvanized their memories in our collective psyche and we just so happen to know the dates of their deaths. The exception being with one of them whose association with a significant event in Jamaica's history while this individual was alive is going to be the determining factor. For the other two, we're going to look at the date of their death and for this individual, we're going to look at the event. Finally, this leaves us with one individual left who is very legendary and who may or may not even have been a real actual person, although there is strong evidence that there was such a person. This individual also happens to be the only female on this list of seven, also a significant point. No hard facts are known about the time of birth or death of this character. And looking at all of the data for all of these heroes in general, I think we had something to work with. Again, highly theoretical. Someone might come around and debunk all of this or shift all the characters around if they find a better fit. No problem. Just tag me if you do that. Are you ready? Here goes from the top down. Number one, the crown chakra, the head. Born February 24th, 1884, under the zodiac sign of Pisces, associated with the crown chakra, Sir Alexander Bustamante, literally the first head of government after Jamaica became independent, and even had the nickname of the chief. Also, interestingly, there is a hard candy in Jamaica known as Bustamante Backbone. In human beings, the backbone is the spine, and we know that the awakened Kundalini energy travels up the spinal column on its way to the head. Just a nice correlation there. Number two, the third eye chakra, the inner vision. We have born on July 4th, 1893 in the zodiac sign of cancer, the visionary Norman Washington Manley, who was a career lawyer. And the third eye chakra in certain traditions corresponds to Dharma or cosmic law, and also the principle of correspondence. Norman Manley was also a member of the African-American Greek fraternity Alpha Phi Alpha that was home to other historical luminaries like Martin Luther King Jr., Thorgood Marshall, Duke Ellington, Dick Gregory, Cornel West, and others. Number three, the throat chakra. And here we see the first martyr on the list with a birth date unknown, estimated in the year 1801 with a date of death by hanging, May 23rd, 1832, in the zodiac sign of Gemini, ruled by the planet Mercury, governing communication. We have the preacher and missionary figure, the Honorable Sam Sharp. We all know that the act of preaching involves communicating ideas. The throat chakra also has to do with communication, and the fact that he was hanged, literally strangling the throat, reinforces this placement. Sam Sharp taking on the role of missionary, meaning spreading the message, also aligns perfectly with the planet Mercury, known as the messenger. Number four, the heart chakra, born on August 17, 1887, in the zodiac sign of Leo, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, with Leo being associated with the heart. Despite being historically a controversial figure, there is no doubt that Marcus Garvey awakened black consciousness to love themselves and their ancestral home, Africa. And it is this message of self-love that I think merits him being assigned in this placement. Number five, we have the solar plexus chakra. And here we have another martyred hero. But in this case, we're going to look at a significant historical activity, which did in fact take place while this individual was alive during the period from October 7th, culminating in events on October 11th, 1865, which took place during the zodiac sign of Libra, which is the astrological association of the solar plexus. This event is none other than the infamous Barant Bay Rebellion. And we have the leader of this event, the Honorable Paul Bogle, karmically entangled with this event. 
The solar plexus chakra is associated with the element of fire and the power of transformation. The Morant Blay Rebellion was a protest by black Jamaicans who were seeking to transform their living conditions under injustice and widespread poverty. Number six, we have the sacral chakra with the last martyr on the list who was executed just one day before Paul Bogle on October 23rd, 1865 on the first day of the Zodiac of Scorpio. The Honorable George William Gordon, who was a mixed race, self-taught businessman, George William Gordon was, a, was born a slave as a child of mixed ancestry with an African enslaved mother and Scottish white father who granted the boy freedom at the age of 10. Aside from Alexander Bustamante and Norman Manley who became leaders after Jamaica became independent, George William Gordon is the only other mixed race person on this list, making him not only a martyr upon his execution, but also the physical embodiment and precursor for what would eventually become our national motto out of many one people. George William Gordon's identification and solidarity with the struggle of the common man also made him the prototype for a Jamaican nationalistic identity and what it means to be a Jamaican on a whole. One of the attributes of the sacral chakra is self-love. The difference between Gordon and Garvey on this point is that whereas Garvey would later cause black people to reevaluate the colonial mindset that portrayed us as lesser beings, loving the skin that we're in and fostering a desire to reconnect with Africa, Gordon can be seen as an early iteration of having love for Jamaica and Jamaican people. The aftermath of his execution kick-started what would eventually usher in our independence years later. And finally, we have number seven, the root chakra, the legend, the icon, the only person on this list with direct ties to Africa, Nani of the Maroons. According to Maroon lore, Nani was born in the continent of Africa into the Akan people from West Africa. It is uncertain as to whether she was a slave or a free woman upon arriving in Jamaica, but one way or another, she ended up aligning with the Maroons on the island who are the people who escaped from slavery and established their own free communities in the mountains of Jamaica, making life very difficult for the Spanish and British colonizers. Nani is described as having magical powers derived from Obia, a spiritual practice which originated in Africa. This makes her connection to the root chakra all the more symbolic because a Africa and unfortunately the colonial powers behind the slave trade are the roots of much of our ancestry in Jamaica and b within the actual root chakra lies dormant psychic faculties which are said to give occult power otherwise known as cities to those who awaken it. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching this video on the astrological, numerological, and hidden in plain sight chakra interpretation for Jamaica and its seven national heroes. Drop a like and subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think about these attributions in the comments. One love.